tomorrow. Satisfaction guaranteed. This is the Microsoft Surface Pro 7, my official replacement to the family computer 21.5 inch mid-2011 iMac which I have been using to edit and upload all of my videos since I first started my YouTube channel. Okay, so the unboxing experience is pretty much what you would expect. It involves a quite professional looking box which contains the Surface itself, its charging cable, and a few pieces of paper that nobody cares about. As you can see, the Surface Pro 7 already looks quite fancy upon opening the box. It comes wrapped in this fun piece of plastic that will probably anger some visco girl, but moving along, the Surface itself looks absolutely stunning once it's all been unboxed. <laughs> Now, because I wanted to use the Surface as something I can take notes on for school purposes as well, I decided to opt in to get the Surface Pen. While it may not be as good as the Apple Pencil, it cuts it pretty close in terms of accuracy. This Surface Pen can sense up to 4096 different levels of pressure, connects via Bluetooth 4.0, supports tilt functionality, the back of the pen doubles as an eraser, something that the Apple Pencil doesn't do by the way, and it uses an easily replaceable quadruple A, that's four A's by the way, battery that is said to last up to a full year. We'll see about that. Now that we've got all that out of the way, let's fire this thing up. Ooh. After setting it up and waiting for countless please wait screens, the Surface finally boots into the Windows 10 desktop and shows a 5% battery notification. Time to plug it in. I think that's quite enough voiceover. So, you may be wondering, which configuration did I buy? If you're not wondering, well... Okay, never mind. All right, so for my new Surface, I went with the 10th gen quad-core Intel Core i5 processor with uh, 256 gigs of SSD storage and 8 gigs of DDR4X RAM. Meaning, if you don't know what these numbers are, it means it's fast for somebody like me. And comes with Intel's Iris Plus graphics, which is pretty awesome. Got four gigs of VRAM, plays Minecraft at like 60 frames per second, so win-win. <laughs> Um, yeah, apps launch fast and it's a smooth experience all around. I'm trying to stop talking because that voiceover was a lot, I know. But yeah, battery life is meh on this thing. I often leave it plugged in most of the day, so it works fine. But yeah, it works. It's fine. It's okay. <laughs> so, as a long-term macOS user, what has it been like switching to Windows 10? To be completely honest, I really, really like the appearance of Windows 10. The animations are smooth and have a nice playful touch to them, and I love the simple flat icons. I found it really easy to get used to Windows 10. It's pretty straightforward and has some little advantages over macOS, but then again, macOS has some little advantages over Windows, meaning I will definitely miss Final Cut, iMovie, and GarageBand, but there are some decent alternatives for Windows, you just have to look around for them. Now, around the back of the Surface Pro 7, you'll see that it has a camera. This rear-facing camera features an 8 megapixel sensor that takes some pretty lousy photos, in all honesty. It can shoot 1080p video at 30 frames per second, but it doesn't really look like 1080p. I would definitely not recommend using it as a day-to-day -day camera, but it comes in handy for scanning documents and such. And it's there if you need it, which is nice. The camera on the front of the Surface has a 5 megapixel sensor that shoots 1080p video at 30 frames per second. Hi, this is front-facing video on the Surface Pro 7. It's 1080p and the exposure kind of goes a little crazy as you can see, but I mean it's fine for video calls. I don't recommend using it as your everyday selfie-taking camera because you don't want to be one of those people who's like carrying a freaking iPad around taking pictures of things. Don't be that guy. But yeah, it's fine, I guess. It works. Also, I apologize for sticking my old earbuds up my nose. <laughs> On the right side of the Surface Pro 7, we have one USB Type-C port that does not support Thunderbolt 3. We also have a single USB 3.0 port. Of course, we do have the proprietary Surface charging port that supports the 65 watt fast charger included in the box. Hit underneath the kickstand of the Surface Pro is a single microSD expansion slot, so you can store files on a microSD card if you're into that. 
The left side of the surface is magnetic for the surface pen. Hmm, I wonder where Apple got that idea for their latest iPad Pros. Just above that is a very, very useful 3.5 millimeter headphone port. What a concept. So if you're planning on buying a Surface Pro 7, please at least get the Core i5 and 256 gigs of storage. It will serve you well, or decently at least. Don't get 128 gigs, please. It's like buying a 64 gigabyte iPhone or Pixel in 2020. And unless you want to use your laptop like a Chromebook, get the Core i5, don't get the Core i3. And if you want to, then you can get the Core i7. It's your choice. So now that I've discussed all those numbers, let's actually put them into perspective. I'm going to test this by showing you how fast this thing boots up. So in order to do this, I have my handy dandy timer right here. Let's go ahead and open up clock. Yes, this is an iPhone 4 running iOS 7. It works as a timer and that's about it. One, two, three. So as you can see, it was about 11 seconds to boot up the machine. Now, to put that in perspective, let me show you just how long the iMac in the kitchen takes to boot up. One, two, three. This is why we never shut off our computer in the kitchen, because it takes that long to start back up again. And believe me, it's only about two minutes, but that two minutes feels like a very long time when you need to do something quickly. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about some issues that I've had with this laptop. So you already heard me talk about battery life. It's fine. It gets you through the day if you're all right with having 20 to 10% left in the battery at the end of the day. But another issue I've had is kernel panics. Yay! So, um, <laughs> yeah, let me explain. These kernel panics can occur for one of several reasons. You have corrupted system files, you have corrupted or incompatible driver firmware, a critical system process died, or you have software on your device that's interfering with the operating system. So long story short, I did manage to fix those kernel panics. Uh, turns out I did have damaged system files, which was fun to get around. I did some fun stuff with the command prompt and managed to fix it, and the issues have seemed to gone. Seems to gone? Oh, seemed, seemed to go away. Sorry, my coffee hasn't kicked in yet. But, uh, yeah. So, most of you are used to typing in the conventional passcode to get into your laptop. If you have a MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, at least one of the newer ones, you'll have the Touch ID sensor, but does your laptop have Face ID? Well, this one does, and it works pretty well. Now, it's not actually called Face ID on this laptop. It is called Windows Hello Face. Let me show you how it works. Now, in order to enroll your lovely face into Windows Hello, you simply center your face into the window that pops up, and after about five seconds or so, it gives you a thumbs up, a high five, and a fist bump. Just kidding. And then you can go and brag to your friends that you can unlock your laptop with your face and pretend like it's a big deal. So I want to keep this video pretty short but to the point, so I'd like to wrap it up with a few disclaimers. Now the most important ones are the Surface Pen, the Surface Keyboard, and the Surface itself all have to be purchased separately. Meaning, you can buy the Surface as its own and use it like a tablet, and you can buy the Surface and the Surface Pen and use it like an iPad Pro or something. Or you can do what I did, bought the pen, the surface and the keyboard and use it like a laptop or a tablet. It's your choice, which is nice, but it's kind of annoying if you want a laptop and you have to purchase everything separately. Next disclaimer is the surface's display is touchscreen, but it is extremely prone to fingerprints, like more than the average smartphone touchscreen. By default, the Surface's display supports HDR video playback, provided that you are connected to power. If you want to play HDR content on battery, you can change this in the system settings. The Surface's display is also extremely reflective, like to the point that it's almost impossible to view outdoors or if you have a window behind you. 
The surface's display is 2736 by 1824, which is higher than 1440p. Yet for some odd reason, the highest quality setting for YouTube playback is limited to 1080p. Even on a video that is labeled as 4K, this may just be due to the fact that YouTube is genuinely a steaming pile of crap. The Surface's built-in graphics can seamlessly drive up to two external 4K displays, yet it still gets sluggish when editing a single stream of 4K video in DaVinci Resolve. It may just be the fact that I only have 8 gigs of RAM, but that should be sufficient enough to edit 4K video, right? I don't know. Or maybe DaVinci Resolve just isn't that well optimized for the Surface Pro devices. Now, if you're somebody who likes to do a lot of gaming on your laptop, I seriously would not recommend the 256GB Core i5 Surface Pro 7, because A, your storage will go bye-bye extremely quickly, and B, Intel's Iris Plus graphics are not meant for intense gameplay. You may be able to get away with it on the 512GB Core i7 model, but considering that it still uses Intel's Iris Plus graphics, you'd be better off with something like the actual 15-inch Surface Laptop 3 with AMD's Ryzen 7 3780U, 1TB SSD, 32 gigs of RAM with AMD Radeon RX Vega 11 graphics, or for short, the maxed out Surface Laptop 3. The Surface does not work very well at all with the original Samsung Galaxy Buds. This might be different with the Galaxy Buds Plus, but I don't have a pair of those, so I have no idea. Now, there are also plenty of bugs with the display drivers that Microsoft will hopefully fix in the near future. Some of these include brightness being stuck until you restart the device, blue light filter turning off and then not turning back on if you connect a second display or if you close and reopen the laptop. If you have multiple displays connected to your device, something which I do quite frequently, apps will only open on the main display and not whichever display you try to open them on, which is very irritating if you need to do multiple things at once. You then have to manually drag said app to whichever display you want to use it on, which isn't very practical. The last issue being that you cannot dismiss the lock screen sometimes until you put the laptop back in sleep and turn it back on again. It doesn't make sense. But it's there, and it's irritating. Now, most of these problems are fixable with a simple software update, so fingers crossed Microsoft will realize these issues and create a solution, but in the meantime, you kind of have to suck it up and deal with it. Overall, if you are willing to look past these issues with the Surface Pro 7, I think it is a great deal for what you're getting, and I highly recommend it. Good job, Microsoft. So that pretty much wraps up today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, then I don't care. <laughs> But yeah, if you want to see more videos like this, then go ahead and hit subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Have a good day, and goodbye.